diving in to the world of personality and archetypes and who you are is a it's a big world to navigate. There is a lot going on there. And specifically here at the Sisters Enchanted, we have really three different ways in which we work with archetypes. Uh, and they are, some of them cross over and really mesh with common archetypes and some are completely unique to us. And I am really excited to talk to you about archetypes today. We know that you were born magical. We know that you are intuitive and we know that you are brimming with everyday enchantment. Here at the Sisters Enchanted, we believe in intention, we believe in intuition, and we believe in everyday magic. Welcome in to the Expedition to Soul podcast. Some of you listening might not know that I went to school, got my master's degree in education, and it was my plan to be a high school English teacher. That's what I wanted to do. I love reading. Uh, I mean, so many people love reading, but one of the things that really blows my mind is taking apart really, really good literature, like really well done literature. So let's go back in time. We're going to talk about archetypes today, but I want to give you a little bit of a reference point as to why I love this so much, why I am very impassioned about talking about it and what we, how we bring it into what we do here. So let's, let's go way back to young, young Sarah. <laughs> no. uh, when I was in college getting my bachelor's degree. So this was a long, you know, years and years ago. And I switched my major, I think three times in my first year of school. And that's very, how very Sagittarian of me. <laughs> now that's an archetype right there. We're already into archetypes. I switched my major three times in the first year. Finally, I landed on being an English major. And the reason for that was because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with myself and what I was in school for. But I took a class with this absolutely brilliant professor. And I think it was, I don't even remember exactly, to be honest, which which literature class it was. I took like all of them, you know, medieval lit, British lit, American lit, late American lit, early American lit, like all the classes. And, but I had this one professor and she would take sentences and put them on the board and completely deconstruct them word by word. And then we would go down to the root word and just understand language in a completely different way. And I had a linguistics professor who did the same. And then at the same time, I also minored in, I had two minors, psychology and women's studies. And what I was really loving about all of this was how looking at women's studies, if you don't know, it's uh, pretty, it's sociology, a lot of sociology in there. So that and the psychology, bringing together how people work, how we communicate ideas, how we get others to critically think, how we tell stories. All of this really came alive for me. So I eventually decided, I went on and actually worked in sales and marketing for a big candy company. Uh, you know, they make us a little something with chocolate and peanut butter. That's really popular. Uh, and then I went on, I, I quit there and went back to school to get my master's degree to be a teacher. And what I wanted to do was have big conversations with like 17 and 18 year olds about literature. Now, the roads went different ways. I ended up leaving that career field, did something else in education. And now I'm here at the Sisters Enchanted. But I wanted to share with you a little bit of that background because I this idea of archetypes and story and how we communicate who we are and understand who we are through the lens of archetypes and story is something that I am incredibly, incredibly passionate about. And I think is a powerful tool that it will empower you if you dive into looking at archetypes and understanding yourself through the lens of archetype. It really is like self-coaching. It is a, a way to manage your thoughts about yourself and rewrite your stories in such a powerful way that you really shorten the time it takes to heal, to integrate a new version of yourself, to change the way something is in your life. And as women in particular, and people who 
our caregivers in their lives, the archetypes that we carry as related to that, they can be very tricky to to shift. They're so ingrained and embedded in us that they're very, very tricky to shift. So in my life, my great grandmother, she was the oldest of, I want to say it was like six kids could have been more. I don't know. There are so many kids in her family, but at least six, possibly more. And she was the oldest. Her mother passed when she was 12 years old and she was the oldest again and female. And she really took on that mothering role at only 12. Her dad, uh, years later would go on to commit suicide. And he was also a drinker. And that left her with tons of responsibility well beyond her years and capability. She would go on to be a young mom. She would have six kids. Uh, And then my grandmother was one of those. My grandmother is the oldest daughter. She does have older brothers. My grandmother was the oldest daughter. And my grandmother would go on to get married one week after turning 16. She would be pregnant at 17, have her first child at 18. And as the oldest daughter would help manage the lives of her brothers throughout the years. You know, one of her brothers fought in the Vietnam War and there was things with that that needed managing. And even though he was the older sibling, right, she rose up as the matriarch in the family. And now we can see this just through lineage, right? And we can see, I can see similar stories with my own mother, how she was the youngest daughter, but in different ways, how that impacted her in her story. And then I see myself as an eldest. So I'm an eldest child of, I've got, there's seven of us between my step half and my whole sister, Anna. It's such a weird thing to say my whole sister, but we have the same mom and dad. Then I've got half siblings, step siblings, and I'm the oldest of all of these and I am female. So we can see all of this generational archetypal story ingrained in my family. So when I look at my archetypes, it's really interesting to consider how am I not just embodying an archetype, but how has that archetype been woven into me innately? And what does it take to shift my archetype? And why might I want to, or my why might I not want to? And this is where we get into psychology. So Carl Jung, he's a famous psychologist. You may have heard of him. If you look at archetype work, if you take any of our shadow work classes here, you've certainly heard me talk about young astrology tarot. You're going to hear his name in there. And he developed 12 archetypes. And these archetypes, um, again, they come through in a lot of modern personality tests, but they're really looking at this kind of innate subconscious. Who are you? Who were you born into? And what I love about understanding these archetypes, or not even understanding them, knowing they exist, is it helps us to see I was born in a way. Why the thoughts, the subconscious, the science behind it, that's, that's not what we're talking today. But you were born in a way. You were born with stories ingrained in you right from the get go. And we can look at those archetypes to understand that. But even more powerful is to look at archetypes that are specific to you, the life you're living right now, your belief system that you are stepping into on your own, the how you perceive your ability to connect to the oneness of the universe and receive and create. And that's where we can look at these other kinds of archetypes and really understand how we need to be nurtured, how we can grow, how we sabotage. And we can look at that through these different types of archetype systems. Now, I'm going to tell you about the two that we use here at this. It was, there's actually three, but two that are unique. One that's very that's explicit to us, one that we teach through uh, one of our partner teachers, and then one that is uh, based in astrology. So an archetype really is this common representation. We can think of archetypes in fairy tales, for example, like the fairy godmother. That's an archetype. Kind of that Cinderella figure. That would be an archetype. Loki in mythology. Loki is a Norse myth figure who's always causing trouble. That's the trickster archetype. We can see the trickster archetype throughout time, culture, all different um, myths and tales. Uh, The trickster archetype there, right? So it's a common sort of story that that characters can we can lump together as this kind of representation, a common representation. 
Now, when we look at modern archetypes, the one that we teach explicitly is the expansion archetypes. So this was something that I woke up one day. You know, we could say I channeled it. We could say I received it. We could say I created it. I don't know what you want to say. All I know is I woke up one day and the expansion archetypes, it's like my brain opened up and something shined down on me and planted them in my head. And they were living, breathing archetypes to share with all of you. So the expansion archetypes is our unique framework for understanding how you expand and how you sabotage in your life right now. What I love about our archetype system that we teach with the expansion archetypes is that there's only five of them where other systems have a lot more. There's only five. And the way that these came through is that you embody, you have all of them within you. It's like astrology. You have all the signs within you. But at this moment in time, any moment, you typically have one that's kind of mostly driving the driving in the driver's seat of your life right now. So you'll have one of these five expansion archetypes in the driver's seat of your life. Once you know your expansion archetype, there is clear information as to how you expand in your life but how that same thing that can allow you to expand is likely sabotaging you because stepping into the expansion part of it is uncomfortable. So for example, somebody who is a mapper archetype, they're a person who's actually quite good at organizing others. They might be very good at helping others see through a plan. They are people who thrive on plans. Like they love a plan. However, if they are not confident in the end goal, if they aren't confident in the outcome, if they aren't sure and trusting of themselves to, to know what to do, they will sabotage and not organize. They will not make the plans. They will not even get started with it because they don't have that trust, that sort of universal trust that no matter what they do, it's going to be the exact right thing. They're going to learn a lesson or they're going to move forward. So our mappers are actually, they thrive with a plan, but we can see that most mappers are often in constriction and they're sabotaging. They're not having a creative manifesting energy because they are looking for somebody. They're second guessing themselves. They're looking for reassurance and validation and somebody else to say, well, this is how you know you're on the right track. This is the outcome. And there's this lack of trust in the support of all that is available for them to take that fall into believing in themselves. So we can see this with the mapper. We have the wanderer archetype, the adventurer archetype. We've got the dreamer archetype and the seer archetype. And most people are in our community tend to be mappers or wanderers. Um, but with each of them, we can see how you expand and how you sabotage. And what I love about identifying your expansion archetype is it really will point to your sabotage. So I am traditionally a wanderer. I've taken, we have a like, quiz that you do and whether my result kind of shifts in how prominent it is, I'm typically a wanderer, which makes a ton of sense for me because as a wanderer, I will want to prove my worth through how much I can do, how much I can provide. Uh, and that though is the best way to sabotage because the more you do, the less you finish and there might be a a fear of finishing because of a fear of failure and what that will mean about your worth if you fail. So a wanderer like myself, I can look at like, hey, all these, I started all these things and I've taken none of them to the finish line. And I can understand where I'm actually sabotaging and holding myself back by trying to do another thing. Uh, so with the expansion archetypes, it's not about growing through the archetypes. It's just understanding which one is in the driver's seat right now, because it is a very clear indicator of how you're sabotaging in your life at any point in time. And the model aligns with the moon phases and the seasons and the even the, the different elements to help us to harness tools to get into that expansion and away from that constriction. So that is our, it's proprietary to us, unique to us expansion archetypes system. And I freaking love it and think that the, how simple it is, it's brilliant in helping a person pinpoint where am I, like I'm doing all the things, I'm doing the rituals, I'm doing the exercise, I'm doing the spells, I'm doing self-care, like why is life not expanding? And it really helps us to see 
clearly where we are sabotaging and how we're disguising that from ourselves. And that's what the expansion archetypes does. So we have another system of archetypes that we work with, and this is taught by our friend, Carol Lee. Carol is an intuitive. She is a a body kinesiologist where she can get messages from your body, body wisdom. She is also a natural food expert and helps people with sugar-free living. Carol's just awesome. And she teaches a program inside of our Enchanted Journey membership around the earth energy goddesses, the earth energy goddesses. So she teaches the this model where you can identify, again, your number one archetype in terms of these goddesses. And then with them, you can find different common life lessons for the different energies. So we have the goddess of the forest, the goddess of the flames, the goddess of the land, the goddess of the waters, and the goddess of the crystals are the common are the the goddess, the earth goddess archetypes. And with each one, we can look at common life lessons. So I am a forest goddess, which I found very surprising for me, but that was my highest score in the assessment that you take. And then my next highest was only one point away was goddess of the flames, which is what I would have guessed that I was, but I was a forest goddess. And the common life lessons for a forest goddess are standing up for oneself, being clear of boundaries, both things I've struggled with in my life, uh, owning being a leader and an individual. That's been really, that's been a lesson for me as I've grown into my role at the Sisters Enchanted. Managing anger and assertiveness, that has been something I've had to work on. I am a Pluto and Mars and Scorpio person. <laughs> that has been something for sure for me to work on. And then expressing oneself emotionally and creatively. So when I look at those life lessons, I was like, hot damn, that is me. That makes so much sense. So what this gives me is another tool, another archetype to look at, like another way to view myself and say, if I am a, a character in my own life, which we all are, we're all characters in our own lives. So when I look at this, what is the story that I'm writing? And how can I use this archetypal energy to rewrite my story or make shifts in my life? So for me, I can look at this and say, you know, where do I need to own being a leader and an individual? How can I continue to manage this sort of frustration that can bubble in me from time to time in my life with that anger, managing my assertiveness, setting clear boundaries. And I can see where have I learned that lesson? Where am I still learning it? Where can I create learning opportunities? And then in here, I can combine my wanderer in there and say, okay, well, to when I'm angry, I will take on new things to like prove to other people that I'm just so good and amazing. That I don't need anybody. When I am not being clear of my boundaries, I end up doing more things and getting into that wanderer sabotage. And it all comes together in this beautiful way to explore yourself and really see on a day to day basis how your archetypes are both beautiful in creating your life and also holding you back and hindering you. Now, the third way that we work with archetypes here is through astrology. So every single zodiac sign is aligned with a story, which is aligned with an archetype. We can also see this with the planets, the different asteroids, uh, the sun and the moon in your chart as aligned to the zodiac signs and the archetypal stories. And you can look at this with every single sign. So I am a Sagittarius, Mercury, Sun, Uranus, Venus, and I'm missing one. I'm five. I'm five Sagittarius. But anyway, neither here nor there. That's why I got those. Mercury, Venus, Sun, uh, Uranus. Oh, what's the fifth one? I don't know. I can't remember the fifth one right now, but I'm five things in Sagittarius. So I can look at that and say, okay, well, I'm a Venus Sagittarius. What is the archetype of a Venus Sagittarius? And what can I learn from that? So the archetype of a Venus Sagittarius, you know, we're really looking at this kind of overarching uh, energy of loving like passion and being driven by passion and adventure. 
and things that feel alive and exciting. And that's both wonderful because I am open for adventure. And that can also be really like a sabotage thing to just like jump into things that feel great all the time, you know, <laughs> like constantly see- seeking pleasure. That's both amazing. And you can see how c- that can be overdone. You're seeking like so much pleasure that you're you know, sabotaging yourself, like financially health in your health, your wellness, your relationships. So these archetypes that we can look at across the board can teach us a lot about ourselves. There are no negative archetypes, because there is a light and a shadow to every single archetype. Even if when we look at Um, Like when I look at Carl Jung's 12 archetypes, one of the ones that I often score high on is um, the words change. Sometimes it's the rebel. uh, Sometimes it is the I've seen it. Another word I can't think of right now. Like but like I'm basically the kind of trouble maker rebel outlaw. That's the word outlaw rebel. I often score kind of high in that. And just looking at that word, we would think, oh, that doesn't sound so great. But what is amazing about that energy is that I will always stand for the other. I'll always stand for what I believe in. You know, I will cause a ruckus if I think that something is unjust. And so that's that's the light side of that. The shadow side to that is that I can be kind of uncooperative. (laughs) I can definitely get up in my head about what I think is right. And I can also sort of want to stick it to the man just because I'm in a mood and there's really no benefit to sticking it to the man on that day or in that way. And that can be a sabotage sort of thing. So with every archetype, we have a light and we have a shadow and understanding your archetypes can help you to really see how you're showing up in your life, can help you to see where the shadow is showing up in your life and how to step into the light. And again, our proprietary system is the expansion archetypes, and it is so simple, and it will very clearly and quickly teach you how you're sabotaging and why things in your life don't feel expansive at any point in time. And then in our Enchanted Journey membership, we have this beautiful Earth Goddess archetype uh, program. It's like a whole class in our membership around what yours is and what you can learn from it, along with connection visualizations. It's a really beautiful curriculum, really well done by Carol, who put it together for us. And we can use these along with astrology uh, and any archetype information to understand more about ourselves. And isn't that like what we're here for? We are here to shift our energy. We are here to create, consciously create. We are here to stand in the word witch and witchery with other people who are, you know, not that are on the fringes of society and other people throughout history who have been labeled as outcasts and othered and persecuted for things they didn't even do. And to shift the way we hold energy so that we can be the embodiment of health and healing and joy and what it looks like to be an empowered individual who takes care of themselves and uses both masculine and feminine solar and lunar in our lives to create a sense of harmony that really ripples out to the people around us and allows them to do the same. And archetypes is one of the ways that we can understand how we're doing this and how we're shrinking ourselves by looking at these stories. All right. I invite you to check out, you know, just like understand more about your archetypes. Astrology is a great place to start. If you know your birth chart or you're know enough to be dangerous with astrology, you can take our expansion archetypes quiz. We do have that available. It's um, should be linked up like all the places you find links or you can just message us or email us. We'll get it to you. And of course, if you want to join us in our enchanted journey membership, let us know because we dive into, we bring in our expansion archetypes. And of course, the, the Earth Goddess archetype program is in there as well. So lots of great resources for you heading into 2024 to help you to tap into your story, understand where you're expanding your energy and where you might be constricting it and really sabotaging. All right, y'all. Lots to think about around archetypes. Uh, Lots for me too. I'm always learning from mine. Thanks for hanging with me today. And until next time, I hope that you have an enchanted rest of your day ahead. If you liked this episode of the Expedition to Soul podcast, please rate, review, subscribe. 
If you're listening on Apple podcasts, it will really help us spread everyday magic, intention, and intuition to the masses and helps us so much as a small business. Be sure to hit that subscribe button on your favorite podcasting platforms. So you never miss an episode. There are new episodes every Tuesday. And as always, thank you so much for listening and being part of the community here at the sisters enchanted, and we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.